action we're going all right hello uh stacy mike beva and the world i'm helen i'm the founder of world ai and we are starting uh this video series because uh, we were building a product for helping women who do sports train fuel and recover based on the menstrual cycle but we had a very unexpected uh, response with COVID-19 is that we have an uptake in sign up and demand from women because they really want to understand how can they boost their underlying immune system because of that we're bringing uh, our team the best people in the world Stacy who is PhD in Nutrition Epidemiology and the author of War, which you might have read, if not do it. She's been working basically her whole life on like, what are the differences between men and women in uh, specifically for sports, but also in nutrition and, and recovery. Van uh, is an elite athlete track himself, by the way, it's this as well, a certified coach. And he's been working very unlike most of the coaches in the world. Uh, specifically helping women train their physiology. And Mike uh, was previously the co-founder of Clue, which is a female tracking app, uh, and now also building Wild AI. We're together to tell you we are here and bring you strength and love and joy and, and, and also like some thoughts. <laughs> so part of it is um, like, I too am getting a lot of you know, questions about like, what can I do? How can I uh, avoid getting sick? Um, and with everyone in shelter in place or isolation, social distancing, all the new buzzwords, right? Uh, people are going, well, how can I get out and exercise? Because that helps spur off my stress and I'm highly stressed. Um, but it's not just about the exercise and, and how you're working with your body to mitigate that stress. We also know that your immune system is very cyclical, just like your menstrual cycle. So we know that in the low hormone state, your immune response is one that, that uh, really fights off the virus and bacteria invaders. But with the rise in estrogen around ovulation, it suppresses that because um, from a physiological standpoint, you don't want your immune system attacking a fertilized egg. So your immune system has a little bit of a drop for about the 24 hours around ovulation so that um, the body may or may not be successful in fertilizing the egg. And then after that, when estrogen and progesterone start to rise, there's another switch in your immune response and there's an uprise in cytokines um, and natural killer cells that will inhibit the body from um, attacking the fertilized egg but instead will work to uh, like kill off things like uh, parasites and worms that come in, induces fever that kills off um, smaller uh, parasitic type responses. So it's a completely different response. So when we look at it from how are we going to stay healthy in this COVID-19 situation, it's if you are in your low hormones phase, you're a little bit more protected because your body's already primed to fight off virus and bacteria. So from a standpoint of exercise, you can afford to go a little bit harder because we know that exercise does have an acute boost in your immune system, but you have to be careful what kind of stuff that you're doing. But and then when you get into the high hormone phase, after estrogen, progesterone start to rise, you're not as, um, able to fight off virus and bacteria. You have a little bit of an immunosuppressant response from progesterone and estrogen. So this is where you want to be a little bit careful. So not looking to do high intensity work, not looking to do um, any kind of exercise in a, a low sleep, high stress state, because you're going to compromise your immune system even more and be more susceptible to being sick. So we also know that this isn't a time to be looking to hit a peak VO2. We're not looking to increase our 5K time. We're looking at how are we going to mitigate stress because stress is the basis for immunosuppressing. So if we can mitigate stress through exercise and good sleep and good nutrition, then we make our bodies more immune to what's going on around us. And then when we come out of this, because we know we will, it's a short blip in the whole time period, but it is historical. When we get out on the other side, our bodies are healthy and we start to resume our exercise and our training plans. And Bevan's the expert for talking how to go from hit to sit 
<laughs> well, I know that a lot of my athletes and athletes around the world are going to be starting to feel a little bit anxious about what the future holds for them in terms of their racing and so forth. And I know that a lot of athletes will also be driven indoors for a lot of the exercise that they do at the moment. So I'm making all the people that I work with really aware of uh, mitigating against the extra anxieties that they might be feeling at the moment. So we're a big uh, proponent of mindfulness training, um, of any stress relief training, of keeping uh, your mood and your mind in a really healthy place. Um, so we really endorse that. I also think that, you know, if we are doing more indoor training now, um, looking at keeping your vitamin D really high um, and, you know, vitamin D is an important, plays an important role in keeping that immune system uh, and defending the body from foreign invaders and organisms. So we want to make sure we have, we're on top of the vitamin D supplementation as well. If you are driven indoors for a long period of time and you want to spice things up a little bit, uh, you know, there's a lot of high intensity interval training uh, options out there for you. I mean, but if you're out there and you're doing some or indoor and doing some bike sessions, um, you may want to consider, you know, switching things up a little bit. And one of the sessions that I actually get a lot of my athletes to do is something that we call micro intervals. Um, and if you really want to sharpen your performance um, through the early phases of your menstrual cycle when your body's nice and strong, um, there's a growing body of research that shows you should definitely make room for some super sort of high intensity short intervals, something like 30 seconds really hard, 15 seconds recovery, um, and a block of those uh, particular intervals, maybe, you know, seven to nine minutes of total work. Um, you might do one or two sets of them, but it could change your way that you're doing your high intensity interval, give you a little bit more variety in your work. And it's about keeping things fresh, keeping things interesting, um, not putting too much pressure on yourself to move fitness um, forward, but just being patient with yourself and making sure you treat yourself uh, well through this period, especially if you're forced indoors for a lot of your training. A lot of athletes, they, they combine sport and sanity and we really need that. What happens since like a week and why are we transitioning into serving that better what's been really nice is how many people have reached out um, and uh, kind of showing their support and um, also uh, just checking in uh, to see how we're doing because we're in close contact uh, with with many of the early beta testers we're still in beta and they've been they've been really warm uh, and it's been it's been nice to say, stay in touch with people everybody is of course uh, dealing with anxiety uh, people talk about loss of sleep um, and seeing their uh, inability to train in the way that they usually have been is affecting that. We're looking to integrate a lot of the insights uh, that, that uh, Stacey and Bevan were just uh, describing into the app and to include new training plans uh, that women can do indoors. Uh, if they're able to get outdoors once in a while too, that's also good um, and stay healthy, uh, but also then giving them the recommendations uh, that they need to keep their immune system uh, in a good state throughout their cycle and not hit a low spot and have alerting them of when they're more uh, when their immune system is more compromised uh, at different times in the cycle or if they trained especially hard in a, in a time of the cycle when maybe they should just be more careful so things like that um, I think we can help people right away uh, and that's what we're looking to build into the app this is not a period we will be focusing on hitting peak VO2, um, but really the focus is on uh, mitigating stress, but remaining active. Um, it is very interlinked with our, our sanity. So today what we are doing is we can still go out in the streets. It is, it is going to be limited, but you can go out by yourself. So do trainings outdoors. Indoors, it's about um, respecting, understanding where you are in your menstrual cycle. And either you can push because you are at the right time or you do a different type of training. And that is, that's how we can help as well. Stacey, how are you coping on your side of the world? My side of the world, uh, I feel like is in a bubble because we're not in you know, um, any shelter in place. There's not too much isolation going on. Uh, our schools are still open. But when I look at what's happening in the States, I feel really far away and disconnected and um, really super anxious because we don't know what the outcome is going to be. Um, so yeah, I'm fortunate enough the ocean is still warm enough that I can swim in it. So I don't have to worry about pools or being around a lot of, you know, potential to get sick. 
Um, but yeah, no, I feel the anxiety and, and it's, it's starting to hit a bit harder than I had anticipated. And Bevan is also in, in New Zealand. How, how is it on your side? On my side, I'm doing everything I can to make sure that I keep on top of my sleep at the moment. And um, I'm not setting an alarm in the morning, but I'm making sure I get to bed quite early. And uh, I've been an intermittent practicer of mindfulness techniques, but I've made sure that I've picked up that practice again in the last few days. And I know that that makes a significant impact on just keeping um, my overall mood in check and just allowing me to remain positive and, and really just uh, waiting for the next couple of weeks to see uh, if these global measures start to, to get any traction and that we start to see some light on the horizon. And Mike, how is it on your, on your side in Germany? Yeah, I feel kind of lucky that uh, when things really started to go down, I was out in the countryside. Um, so I'm out uh, kind of like in a farmhouse in the, in, the, in the countryside outside of Berlin. And it's beautiful and very calm, uh, except for when I go to the supermarket. Um, and uh, along with Bevan, I'm also uh, increasing my meditation practice. I've been a meditator for a really long time. I'm also reaching out to my community to offer free meditation classes, which I've done for quite a while also. Um, and uh, that's helped with my sleep quite a bit. Um, and the nerves. I have family, of course, back in the U.S., and uh, parents are sheltering in place, and uh, my sister and her family are in San Francisco doing the same. So schools closed, all of that, and all, it's just uh, kind of digesting all the information and trying to stay rational about it. So we're headed back. I'm headed back into Berlin uh, this weekend, so we'll see what it's like when I get back into the city. Wow. And what about you? Yeah, I'm in London. I was in Spain and uh, on, on uh, Saturday, meant to leave on Sunday, we had to leave emergency. Um, we were closing the borders. And so that was, it was weird because we were in, a, in, a, in an emergency country, uh, like we had the highest level. And then I landed in the UK and everything was normal, nearly. And uh, so it's very weird to have like these two levels of uh, stress. And uh, so I went into a social distancing on Sunday. By that, I mean that I am fully covered when I go out, so mask, glasses, and gloves, uh, because I don't know if I'm contaminated and I don't want to pass it on, and I also don't want to get sick. Like everyone's like, oh, it's like, like a flu, but I don't want to get a flu either. Yeah. Um, so I think this is the, the best thing we can do. I have a lot of friends who are doctors and nurses, and they are devastated uh, by the fact that people are not in self-isolation yet. Um, and yeah, I'm in, the, I'm in my flat. I can still go out. And now there are rumors lockdown will happen in the UK, which is probably a good thing because without compulsory, basically people still go out and go in restaurants. And kids are still at school altogether. Stress is very high. What has been incredible is like our team. I think like we are all boosted because um, we feel like we can have a role to play for to help our members for sanity and our athletes. Um, and but yeah it is uh it is it is it is it is a very very weird moment um but my hope is that we will take a step back and are able to breathe and become better as a society without too much of a toll hopefully yeah i, f I feel uh, lucky to have the opportunity to contribute to some things i feel um people uh that can help people right especially with all the stress that people are going through right now. Yeah. yeah. Sending you love and the strength. Um, sending compassion and understanding and patience. I'm sending an awareness of community and remembering just to take a really big deep breath. Uh, <laughs> I would say, uh, be good to yourself and reach out to other people that you see need your help. Definitely. Amazing.